ISIS, the Taliban, and Al Qaeda. Those are the folks who would discriminate. We bombed a building in 2017 like we never usually do. We bombed it because they threw homosexuals off that building. Our terrorist enemies hate homosexuals more than we do. They're the ones who discriminate. Our job in the military, our Navy creed, I'm committed to excellence and fair treatment of all. That's what we learn in boot camp. That's what we drill into ourselves each and every day while we're in boot camp. Please vote up on this bill. Yeah, look, uh, in American governance, especially in you know Florida politics, you never know when you're gonna be confronted by an absolute confident bigot like that. But if it happens, I hope for myself, for all of us, that we're able to react in the moment, just like that woman in the white coat, absolutely shocked at what she's hearing. It seems a little bit naive, I guess. It is, after all, Florida. I feel like you should be a little bit more prepared for that. But anyway, uh, that apparently went against her values, and so that is to her credit. In any event, um, he said uh, they hate homosexuals even more than we do, and that is. That is amazing in like at least three different ways. One that he goes on to tie it to his military training that he thinks his deeply, deeply aggressive homophobia makes sense coming out of all of his training and everything. Um, the fact that he said we, he didn't say I, he just spoke as you know all of us assembled, all of us here. I think we can all agree that we utterly despise these people. Remember a couple of years ago, we were pretending that we didn't hate them quite as much, try to get some to vote for us. We're done with that now. We all hate them. That is that is very confident to say something like that and attribute to everyone. And then of course, I think, I think the worst part, well, other than just saying it at all, is he understands that he is talking about a group, the Taliban, Al Qaeda, who among many other reasons that they were absolutely awful, is because of how much they despised everyone who wasn't exactly like them and were willing to kill people who were different. He sees that they do that. He doesn't think that it's a problem that he's on that continuum moving towards that. Now, maybe he wouldn't violently execute gay people or at the very least, maybe he's not advocating it for it right now because he thinks they still have more work to do to you know ready the ground for it. But he doesn't think that maybe we should learn something by the murderous homophobia of regimes like the Taliban. He's perfectly fine being in the conversation with those people. Jared, what do you think? Yeah, this was the flex that he thought he was pushing. Like, you know, we're not that bad. And by the way, he was trying to defend the military because they're fighting against some wokeism that they think is happening within the military. So therefore, yes. Yes. it's getting a bad name. So the military is getting a bad name because we want to fight against any kind of inclusion, equity, or actually recognition of people as human beings within the military ranks. That's their problem. So this bad look on the military, he wants to point out to you guys, hey, yo, we're not that bad. We only hate gay folks 97% of the time, sorry. Uh, which by the way also, where's the explanation for this? Well, why have we heard of Jeff Holcomb being on any kind of program, even if it's local, explaining why he hates a, a percentage yeah. of, of constituents who pay taxes, uh, who contribute to the community. And I guess some of them voted his dumb ass into office. So when is the explanation gonna come that you hate tax paying Americans? Cuz that's apparently what we only care about is people give enough money so you can continue to have your positions of power. When are these folks finally gonna say, yo, if I'm not allowed to exist, why is my money real then if I'm not? Or if you're supposed to hate me, do you hate my cash? Shouldn't these, maybe these folks should be exempt from participating in a government that doesn't recognize their existence or openly effing hates them. When is that question finally gonna be asked? And like you said, he says it in the indictment of his entire party. When is everyone else that's associated with this guy gonna be asked? Or do you still associate with the guy who just said you're a bigot? Cuz he said you're a bigot, not yeah. me. We've been warning about how this anti LGBTQ, specifically recently anti trans fervor on the right, uh, is going to turn violent. And I mean that in a continuing fashion. Obviously, it already has many, many times attacks, murders, and those sorts of things. But I don't want people to forget about how much hatred and anger and xenophobia has been stoked on the right. And I want to show you this video. So Stephen Monticelli, I believe is the name, posted this video of a serial protester, an anti-LGBTQ protester 
who just like dispensed with all the fake concerns over kids and everything and just said what the ultimate objective is. So yeah, just to be clear, that's John Fornace, I believe is the individual, a regular participant in these. His life now, as so many deranged Americans lives has become just being told by Tucker Carlson or libs of TikTok or whatever, uh, this is the group that you hate now. Your entire life is hounding them on a daily basis. He stood in the middle of a group of other people, some uh, his political opponents, some people who agree with him and yelled into a bullhorn that I and others, we just want to kill all of you. And it doesn't look like the other people on his side had an issue with it. It doesn't look like they gasped. What are you talking about? No, it's something, something, save the children, something, something, drag, you know, the cover story. They seemed perfectly comfortable with him stating that all of this is, this is really just pretext. This is prologue to what we want to do. Someday someone is going to tell us that it's time to start shooting and we're going to do it. We're mostly just hanging out until that point. And this guy felt perfectly comfortable to say that, knowing that he was being filmed. JR, what do you think? It's weird how uh, bigotry and hatred and uh, 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 threats to kill people is so easy to say out in public now with no fear of any kind of responsibility or consequences for it. I can say because my former president said it. He said, uh, we can do whatever we want, these people are coming to get me. So the fear is is increasing, but it always responds with fear that turns into this kind of anger and, and directed violence at folks. Now, if this guy gets attacked, if someone says, "Oh, really?" and they attack him first, he's the biggest crybaby, biggest victim. Can't believe you guys did this to me. Look at how violent these people are. After you say things like that, it's always one of those things. They assume they're the only ones who are willing to do something after. They actually say what they're gonna do to this other person. Self defense is suddenly not a thing for them. But as long as they're the ones attacking, they're the righteous ones with the weapons and the and the desires for blood. Yo man, this is straight up terrorism. It's straight up terrorism. If guys can make a, a videos holding hostages of folks that they don't like because of who they are and where they came from and all that. And we're afraid of it and we're worried about we gotta do something about this. Why are we not afraid of this? What's different? What's different? 